Crystal clear water doesn't just happen by accident. If you've got fish in your pond, they're producing waste all the time. And without a way to deal with it, the waste can build up, turn toxic, and leave you with sick fish and murky water. The good news, you don't need to spend a fortune on a fancy filter system. Today I'll show you how to build a simple biological filter that'll do the job better than most store-bought ones. G'day, my name is Kev and my mission is to help you build and maintain a pond without spending a fortune. If that sounds like you, consider subscribing and check out ozponds.com for guides, calculators and the full pond formulas blueprint. So what is a biological filter? A biological filter is just a home for beneficial bacteria. They take toxic ammonia from fish waste, convert it to nitrite and then nitrate, which is much less harmful, and your plants can use it as food. Mechanical filtration is different, it traps muck, but biology transforms it. In a good filter system, you use both. You want to trap the solids so they don't clog up the biological area, and that lets the bacteria handle the chemistry. There's lots of different types of biological filters that you can build. Today I want to talk about three different types of ways. First will be a bog filter, which is my personal favourite. The second is a higher flow filter, which is good if you don't have space for a bog filter. And the third is a trickle down filter, which really shines when you're keeping lots of fish. Each design has its pros and cons, but the principle is the same. We aim to trap solids, give bacteria surface area to grow on, and we want to return clean water to the pond. So let's go through how to build each one. So for a bog filter, I always start by asking how much water I'm filtering and what's going to be living inside the pond. For a simple wildlife pond, I probably only need a 5% bog filter. For a few goldfish, I'm going for a 10%, bigger messier fish like koi, 15-20%, to and ducks and turtles, 25% or more. There is a calculator at ozponds.com that will size both the filter and the pump for you, but as a quick rule, I take the empty filter volume and multiply it by six, and that's the pump size that I'm after. Once we have the size of the filter, there's a few different options for what to construct the filter out of. We can use anything we can fill with rock, pebble and plants, and it's waterproof. Sometimes I build the filter into the ground using a pond liner. Sometimes I use a container like a barrel, an IBC, stock trough, or a cut down water tank. We always want to build it with cleaning in mind. Barrels and IBCs can have flush valves at the base, whereas in-ground bogs need a clean out port going down to the bottom for a pump or a pond vac. This allows you to completely drain and flush out the filter. In my bog filters, I always like to pump water into the base of the filter and I lay larger rocks at the bottom and smaller pebble at the top. That way heavier muck stays low, while cleaner water flows upward through the fine pebble, which houses more bacteria. Planting water-loving plants in the top layer to trap fine sediments and soak up nutrients, but you just need to thin them out now and then so they don't choke the flow. For small ponds, I've even got a mini bog design based on an aquaponic grow bed, and all of these designs are available in my Pond Formulas Blueprint if you want the details. But that's the basic gist of the bog design. We're pumping water through rock, pebble and plant roots to purify the water. Heavy solid material is trapped in the base and it can be easily removed. Because these filters are quite big in relation to other filters, they're also very low maintenance. All right, now let's look at a simple high flow container or barrel filter. These filters are great when you don't have space for a bog. Pebble is cheap, but it doesn't have the same surface area as commercial filter media. So a container filter can give you more biological performance in a smaller footprint. The simplest design works like this. You pump water into the barrel. First it hits the sponges to trap the muck. Then it flows through your biomedia, like bio balls or something similar. You can use bulkhead fittings or uni seals to plumb these water tight. These are what I also use on my bog filters that are in containers. I've got links to them on my website if you're not sure what they are. If you want to expand the system, you can chain multiple barrels together. It might look something like this. The first barrel traps solids, the second one is filled with biomedia, 
and a third might have media plus aeration, which really boosts bacterial performance. More oxygen means faster ammonia processing, and that's great in heavily stocked ponds. But you do need to watch your nitrate levels, because unlike a bog, there aren't plants pulling those nitrates out. In high flow systems, I've never seen bacteria that remove nitrogen fully establish. So in these setups, you will need to do occasional water changes. That's if you have high fish loads anyway. Sizing depends on your stock. That's the type of fish or how densely populated the pond is. And your media, that's the stuff that will provide the surface area for the bacteria. The more surface area the media provides, the more room it has to grow good bacteria. Because all filter media is different, most filter media manufacturers will give guidelines on how much is needed to filter the pond. And lastly, let's look at a trickle down or a shower filter. They're another good option. They're compact and they add loads of oxygen, so they're fantastic for koi ponds or high fish numbers. So here's the basic setup. Stack trays or boxes that can sit on top of each other, fish boxes, plastic crates, or purpose-built trays all work. You pump pond water up into the top tray. You'll add your sponges to the top tray, and that's where you'll trap all the muck. You can fill the trays below with biomedia, and as the water cascades down, it's filtered and oxygenated. You'll drill plenty of holes in each tray, or use a water bar so that water spreads evenly instead of just running down on one side. Once the water passes through the system, it's returned to the pond by gravity. Because the water is constantly splashing and aerating, your bacteria work faster. That makes trickle downs excellent for high stocking densities. Like container filters, they do need a bit more maintenance than a bog filter. The sponges can clog up, so you'll want to clean and replace them regularly. Just remember to rinse with pond water, not tap water. Now, a filter's only as good as the way you maintain it, so there's a couple of design tweaks that can make life a lot easier. First, pump protection. If you don't want your pump clogging with muck, you want to add a pre-filter basket or an intake bay, even a DIY skimmer, or even just wrap the pump in a coarse sponge and that stops big solids before they even reach your main filter. Next is breather holes. If you're pumping water into the base of a filter and the water overflows back into the pond via gravity, you might want to consider adding a breather hole to prevent the filter from siphoning. Then you've got cleaning access. You always want to design your filter so that it's easy to flush. A flush valve at the bottom of a barrel or a clean-out port down to the base of an in-ground bog means you can empty out the muck without tearing the whole thing apart. And when it comes to cleaning, keep it simple. Your sponges will need the most regular rinsing. You just squeeze them out in a bucket of pond water, never tap water. And the biomedia only needs a light rinse if it gets clogged, otherwise just leave it alone. And here's some tips for success. Surface area is king. The more nooks and crannies means more bacteria. Always size the pump based on the filter. Most people just buy a pump based on the size of their pond, but don't think about how they're actually filtering the pond. As mentioned, never wash media with tap water. Chlorine kills bacteria instantly, so you always rinse with pond water. And always be patient. New filters take time to cycle, so don't panic if the water isn't perfect straight away. And some common mistakes to avoid. Don't undersize the filter. Don't overclean it, which has the potential to wipe out your bacteria colony. And avoid poor designs that leave dead spots inside the filter. So that's three ways to build a biological filter, a natural bog, a space saving high flow filter and a trickle down filter. Each has its place depending on your pond and your fish load. These aren't the only ways to build a biological filter, but hopefully they give you some ideas. If this video helped you out, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. And remember there's lots more helpful information available at ozponds.com. If you've built your own biological filter, whether a bog, a barrel or a trickle filter, share it in the comments and we'll all learn from each other. Thanks for watching. See ya.